In a series connected LC or RLC circuit, the current passing through the circuit is a maximum at the resonant frequency. What is the resonant frequency for a resistor of 22 ohms, a coil of 50 microhenries, and a capacitor of 40 picofarads? 50 microhenries equals 50 times 10 to the minus 6 henries. 40 picofarads equals 40 times 10 to the minus 12 farads. The resonant frequency will equal 1 divided by the quantity 2 pi times the square root of 50 times 10 to the minus 5 times 40 times 10 to the minus 12. Doing the math, we have a resonant frequency of 3.56 times 10 to the 6, which is 3.56 megahertz. In a parallel resonance circuit, the minimum current flows through the circuit at resonance. What is the resonant frequency if the resistor is 33 ohms, the coil is 50 microhenries, and the capacitor is 10 picofarads? Well, 50 microhenries equals 50 times 10 to the minus 6 henries. 10 picofarads equals 10 times 10 to the minus 12 farads. That resonant frequency is going to equal 1 over the quantity 2 pi times the square root of 50 times 10 to the minus 6 times 10 times 10 to the minus 12. That frequency is 7.12 times 10 to the 6th, or 7.12 megahertz. Now, let's look at Q and bandwidth of resonant circuits. Real capacitors and real inductors both include some series resistance, so they are less than ideal components. So. How can we evaluate the relative merits of these less than ideal components? We do that with Q, the quality factor. Q, quality factor, is equal to X over R, where X is reactance and R is resistance. So Q equals reactance divided by resistance. And now for bandwidth. Bandwidth refers to the frequency range over which the circuit response in voltage or current is no more than 3 dB below the peak response. 3 dB down is where the circuit power is half the peak power. So these two points are called the half power points. The higher the Q, the narrower the frequency response. These two frequencies at which the half power points occur are called F1 and F2. The range of frequencies where F1 and F2 occur is called delta F. The bandwidth of a resonant circuit based on Q and the resonant frequency is as follows. Delta F equals F sub R divided by Q, that is, the half power bandwidth delta F equals the resonant frequency of the circuit, which is F sub R, divided by Q, the quality factor. A parallel circuit has a resonant frequency of 1.8 MHz and a Q of 95. Find the half power bandwidth. The formula we're going to use is delta F equals F sub R divided by Q. Substituting the values, we have delta F equals 1.8 times 10 to the 6th divided by 95. That gives us a delta F of 18.9 times 10 to the 3rd hertz, or 18.9 kilohertz. As frequency increases, electric and magnetic fields do not penetrate as deeply into a conductor, such as a wire. As frequency increases, the effective area of a wire gets smaller and smaller. 
Q will increase with increasing frequency, but up to a point where internal resistance due to skin effect becomes greater, and as a result, there comes a point where Q begins to decrease. And our next subject is toroid inductors. Here is a variety of inductors wound on toroid cores. The shape of the inductor's core affects how the magnetic field is contained. The donut-shaped core reduces unwanted coupling between components. Proper turns counting is important when you wind a toroidal inductor. Each pass through the center of the core must be counted. You can calculate the inductance of a toroidal inductor if you know the inductance index value. Here is an example of several different core types. Here is how you calculate the inductance of a power of a powdered iron inductor. The formula is L is equal to A sub L times N squared divided by 10,000 or N equals 100 times the square root of the quantity A L divided by A sub L where L is inductance in microhenries, A sub L is the inductance index in microhenries per 100 turns and N equals the number of turns. In this problem, we're asked to find the number of turns in for an inductor of 5 microhenries and a core of a T50-6. First, we determine that the A sub L is equal to 40. Next, we use the formula N equals 100 divided by the square root of A of L over A sub L. This gives us a formula of n equals 100 times the square root of 5 over 40, which equals 35 turns. For toroidal inductors for ferrite cores, the formulas are L, inductance in millihenries, equals A sub L, inductance index per millihenry per thousand turns, times n squared, where n is the number of turns, divided by 1 million, or n equals 1,000 times the square root of L divided by A sub L. Now, find the number of turns given L equals 5 microhenries and the core is an FT50-43. Now, from the table, A sub L equals 40. Therefore, the number of turns in is equal to 1,000 times the square root of L divided by A sub L. Using our formula, N equals 1,000 times the square root of 1 divided by 523, which says the number of turns is 43.7. The homework assignment is to read Chapter 5, and to do the study questions listed in the syllabus.